today I'm going to show you two really easy ways of setting up amazing light shows, controlling them from the decks without breaking the bank. Hey guys, welcome back to Crossfader. My name's DJ Holland and today I'm going to give you a full guide on how to get engine lighting working inside your decks. Now there's two ways to do this. There is the Wi-Fi enabled Philips Hue lighting, which is free of charge and is very easy to set up as long as you have some Philips Hue lights. And there's a more expensive, but way more capable DMX version of this software where you can control various more advanced lights. So if you want to skip ahead to the section, the video will be time stamped below so you can skip to the point which is most relevant to you. However, that said, let's get started with the Philips Hue integration. Now, Philips Hue integration is something new. It works wirelessly over Wi-Fi and it's really, really impressive. It's great for all you bedroom DJs out there and people who may be streaming who just want something quite simple to set up and you might already have Philips Hue in your lights at home already. So how does this work? Well, it uses the Philips Hue Entertainment Zone feature, which is set up in the Philips Hue app. Once you've set that up, your decks and engine lighting can then control this entertainment zone to make the lights flash, you know, according to your music. Now, not every Philips Hue light is compatible with the Entertainment Zone feature. It mainly is all the RGB fixtures. No third-party lights can be used either in this at the moment, so you can't buy a Philips Hue compatible light. It has to be a Philips Hue light. But there are various different models out there. There's the Iris, the Play Bar, uh, the Hue Go, which these little portable battery-powered lights. There's quite a few, and I'll try and get a list put up here with all the models that we know are currently compatible with this system. But first of all, let's head into the Philips Hue app on our phones and get this zone set up. So here we are in the Philips Hue app. I'm quickly gonna just set up this bridge as a brand new device. So I need to press the button on the bridge and connect that to my phone. We'll press continue there. We're all set, happy days. Right, let's add some lights in. Now, if you've got lights, just make sure they're powered on. When it finds a light, it will illuminate it, and then you can give it a name. So we've got a play bar there. That's fine. Once your lights are illuminated, you need to drag them into a new room, just like this. So I'm just going to call this crossfader for the time being. You can drag all these into a room. Press done. Now we need to create an entertainment area. Now this is really important because this is how the decks actually communicate with the lights. So let's create an area. Uh, crossfader DJ booth. Done. And now we can add our lights in the room, as you can see. Next. Now, at the moment, where you position the lights in this virtual room doesn't really make a difference in the app because all the lights follow the same patterns. But I have been told in the future this will become more relevant. Um, as you can see, this is designed to be in a living room environment, not a DJ box. So imagine that the sofa is your DJ booth and the crowd is where the TV would be. Once you've created that area, that's all you need to do in the app. You can now go ahead and close that app. We've done everything we need to do. Now, what we need to do is get our decks connected to the lights. So, make sure your decks are on the same Wi-Fi network as your Philips Hue. This Philips Hue bridge here, as you can see, is connected to power, but it's also connected to the Wi-Fi network. We've got a router just below. So, to do that, swipe down from the top on your decks. Make sure your decks are running engine version 2.0 or above. At the time of recording, we've got the Prime 2, Prime 4, and Prime Go, as well as the SE5000 and SE6000 models from Denon DJ. But I have been told there are more decks coming. So if you're watching this in the future, just make sure you're an engine 2.0, no matter what your decks are, and you should be good. Right, head to Wi-Fi. Make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi network. We are here. And then... What you need to do is make sure you've got engine lighting enabled. So if you don't see lighting down here in the corner, as we've got it, go to settings, go to services, and make sure that engine lighting is turned on there. Now you can either access it by pressing lighting there, or if you're just on your main you know, browsing screen, or even if you're playing music, if you double tap the view button, this will launch engine lighting. 
Now we want to head into basic mode. We don't need the features of professional mode at the moment. We just don't need that. So we'll just press basic and it'll say instantly, would you like to connect to Philips Hue smart lights? Yes, we would. What we want to do now is press add a new bridge and it'll search for the bridge, which of course is just here. It takes a couple of minutes to find the bridge, so don't worry about this. Uh, it should just take about a minute to two minutes. Now it's found the bridge, it's saying push the button on the bridge to connect. So we can just press that button in the middle there. And you can see that the current area is the Crossfader DJ booth. That's the entertainment zone we set up. So that's all working. We can head out of this settings tab now. And we can just quickly check if the lights are working by using the functions on here. So if we press the red button, we see that we've got the red lights. Try the strobe. That works fine. Green, blue, white. So this is all working great. So let's go ahead and get a track loaded in. So double tap the view button again. Let's go back to the Crossfader music pack. There is a free music pack from ourselves full of free music for you to use. If you'd like to download it, just click the link in the top right hand corner. So let's go ahead and get one of these tracks loaded in. And now our lights will be controlled on beat to the music. Now, the brightness of the lights will be controlled by the fader movement on the up fader and also the cross fader if you're using the cross fader and it is assigned. And the music will lock the lights in time. So what I mean by that, if I get this playing, as you see, the lights are flashing. If I stop the deck there and scroll it back, you see I can control the lights just with the music. Now we can obviously control the lights to a higher degree than this. If we double tap view again, we can override the colors that they're using. We can strobe, we can black them out if we want to create a you know, breakdown effect. We can press white for a blinder effect. And then also at the bottom, we've got the styles of the lights show. So at the moment we're playing all banks, but what we can do is we can change this to dance music, which is quite an energetic light show, as you can see. We can play an upbeat light show. We've got hip hop, which is a bit more relaxed. We've got a chilled out light show, which is a bit more you know, smoother in its transitions. And then of course we can play all of these randomly. So that's how we get Philips Hue lighting working inside our decks on engine lighting using just the Wi-Fi network alone. But we can level this up we can actually use professional DMX lighting just like these that I have behind me. Now to do this, it's not as simple as just connecting over Wi-Fi. You will need a little bit of knowledge on how DMX lighting works, but fear not, that's why this video is here. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So in professional lighting terms, DMX stands for Digital Multiplex, and it's a way that we control our professional lights. Now. I'm saying the word professional and instantly a lot of you will be thinking that means expensive and complicated. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't need to be expensive or complicated. In fact, DMX lighting has been around for so long now that you can get very, very cheap lights with DMX capability, which allows us to fully control what that light is doing. Now, it can be a little bit complicated and for years it has been very complicated, but thankfully the system is starting to be a lot more automated and a lot more easier to control thanks to programs like SoundSwitch. Now SoundSwitch is the technology inside the decks which is powering engine lighting. It's its own piece of software and to control lights like this, we do actually need to have an adapter and that software on our computers to set it up properly. Now, DMX adapters for computers used to cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds, but thankfully, this little dongle here, which is about half the size of what DMX adapters used to be, this is only about 25, 30 pounds here in the UK, which is absolutely next to nothing. And even better, when you buy the SoundSwitch micro dongle, this thing here, it also comes with three months free trial of the SoundSwitch software, which is plenty of time to get the majority of your music and your fixtures set up. And then if you do want to go on and continue using the SoundSwitch software, you can pay even monthly or you can buy it outright for around $200. So what is this little adapter? Well, on one end we have a USB. 
This will connect to your computer when setting up the light show. But more importantly, and this is where it's really, really advanced, this will con connect to your DeX and allow you to put the laptop and leave it at home and just control the light from the DeX themselves. You can't set them up on the DeX, but you can control them. And that really is groundbreaking. This has never been done before. On the other side, we have what looks like an XLR connection. Now, this is how DMX is connected. It's through a three pin system, just like an XLR cable. XLR cables do work as DMX cables. However, you'll find DMX cables are usually cheaper and thinner because they don't need the audio um, isolation and shielding that XLR cables do. So don't worry about that. What you do need to do though is grab yourself some lights with DMX capability. If the light doesn't say specifically that it does DMX, an easy way to tell it is to see if it has two XLR connections, a female and a male. Now, setting up your lights, this is quite simple. You can see behind me I have four lights. Each one of them has a DMX in and a DMX out. Now the first DMX in will come from my dongle here on the computer or the DeX and that will run to the first lights in, then the out will go to the second lights in, that out into that in, and finally that out into that in. So we're just daisy chaining all the lights together, meaning that we don't need to have a million of these adapters and one for each light or anything like that. One dongle will do a variety of lights as long as they are all daisy chained together. So then, now all our lights are daisy chained together, let's head over to our computer and launch the SoundSwitch software and get this started. When you first launch the SoundSwitch software, you'll be asked which mode you want to enter. Is it edit or perform? Now, SoundSwitch doesn't just work inside the decks like we have here. You can use it and you can use your computer to control the lights directly, and that's what perform mode is for. Now, perform mode is great. It works with Serato DJ, Virtual DJ, it even works with um, the Denon decks if you want to use your computer specifically for that. But in this video, we're all about using that engine lighting inside the decks themselves. So we're gonna head over to edit mode. Now we're in edit mode, this is your basic interface. So a quick overview of what's happening here. Up here where it says default, this is our venue. So if we play in different venues with different lights, we can actually set up up to five different venues and we can you know, build individual light shows for each one of those venues. Now, a lot of people will just have the lights they've got and that's absolutely fine, but venues are really, really cool and useful for maybe mobile DJs who have different packages or like I say, traveling DJs who are gonna take this on the road with them. So we're just gonna leave that as default. I mean, you can rename it if you right click, but for us, it's not important. On the left hand side, you can see this is our music library here. This is all the places we can find our music and then start creating light shows for. We'll go into that in a bit. Below, we've got effects, positions, and attribute cues. These are all to do with your lights. So first thing we need to do is we need to set those lights up. So up here, click on DMX. So here we are in the DMX section. Now, the first thing you will notice is we've got two universes on the left hand side, universe one and universe two. And each one of them has 512 boxes next to them. Now these boxes all individually represent an address. An address is how we find our lights in our system. Remember, there's only one cable technically connecting all these lights together. So how do I send an, a, a command to this one light without all the rest of them thinking that that you know, flash red information is for them? Well, we do this by addresses. Now, each light has various functions on it. It's very rare you'll have a light that just does one thing. So most lights will have more than one address as you'll need to send different commands to each light. So these buttons behind me here, these have various different modes within them. I can set them up to be in what's known as 53 channel mode. This is where I have ultimate control over the lights. I can almost control every single little block within these lights or I can set them into a lower channel mode. I can set them into five channel mode where I only really have five options of what I can do with them. Now each light is different and each light will have various address parameters in it and only you will know which light is best for you. 
However, SoundSwitch have made this really, 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 really easy to control because down the bottom here, you can see that we have a fixture library. So what we're going to do to set these lights up with this system is we're going to search the name of these lights in. Now, these are Equinox Spectrapix. So if I type in Equinox, there we go. And you can see there's all the lights that Equinox make already in here. So let's type in Spectrapix. And you can see now all these lights are showing up. Now this is the same light, but as I said earlier, you can put these in different modes and each mode is here. As you can see, we've got uh, mode one, mode two, mode three, mode four, mode five. And to the side of that, there's the amount of channels that that mode takes up. So what I'm gonna do for this example is I'm gonna have the middle two lights next to me be one set of lights. I want them to do the same thing, but I want the outer two lights to do a different thing. Okay, so I'm going to set these into the five channel mode. It's just easiest uh, for me to show you this working. Again, your lights will vary. Thankfully, all the lights and the modes are inside this library. If you find that your light isn't in this uh, fixture library, you can email SoundSwitch and they will aim to input your light into the database within 24 hours, which is incredible and saves you all the legwork of having to program in your lights manually, which trust me, is a long process. So it's really cool that they do that. So let's get these lights set up. Like I say, I'm gonna use these in five channel mode. So let's grab that as mode three and let's drag it onto the addresses up here. So as you saw then, the light was dragged onto the uh, addresses and I've covered the addresses one through to five. So always take the first number and program your lights to that first number. So I want these middle two lights to work on their own. Rather than having to drag two separate um, lights onto this address fixture and eat up loads of um, my available 512 addresses. Rather than doing that, because I want these two lights to do the same thing, if I give them the same address, they will receive the same commands. So the first address that I covered up with that light was address number one. So I'm now gonna head to my light and set this address. So if I click here, I can see address, I can click enter. Five channel mode, press enter. And I'm gonna give this the address 001. I'm gonna do the same for this light here. And now these two are linked and they're set up. So what about the outer two? Well, I'm gonna use these in the same mode. I'm gonna drag this on. As you, as you can see, I'm now covering the address number six through to 10. So the address, first address of that block was six. So what I want to do is head to these lights and give them the address of six. Now that we've done that, let's just quickly give them, uh, tell the software what those lights are. So you can click down on here and we've got wash, spots, strobes, blinders. What I want these to be is a wash. I'm gonna make the inner two the primary wash and I'm gonna make the outer two secondary. That way our computer knows that these are separate lights. It knows not to just give them the same kind of patterns going on. We can also group them as well if we want to control um, them in a group. So say you have uh, a load of lights at the back of a room, but you can group all those so you can control just the back of the room and you can group all the fronts. So if I put them both in group one, if I did have more lights in this example, I might put them in a secondary group, but that's fine. Once we're done, we can hit exit in here. Now these are set up, we can check that they're working by heading to the MIDI button here and we'll just select a color. Red, yep, these are all working, that's great, that's working fine. So, head out of the MIDI area by pressing escape. Let's get some light shows set up with our music. Now, I'm gonna be using this Denon uh, DJ Prime 4 with engine lighting inside it to run my light show. So, what I want to do is find my music in Engine DJ. So on the left hand side here, you can see I can click down on Engine DJ. If your uh, music isn't showing up here, what you'd want to do is head up to the settings here on the top right corner, head to library and make sure you've got show Engine DJ library selected here. So let's go in and let's press on the sound switch playlist that I have set up and let's have a look at a light show. now. On the right and left hand side here in this column, you can see it's all blank. That means there isn't a light show set up for this. So what we can do is we can 
right click on this and press auto script and this will create an automatic light show for us. We don't have to go in and spend hours programming lights. We can just press auto and we can select what kind of light show we want from these various presets, mellow, trap, lots of color for example. So we press lots of color and press auto. It will quickly run it and now we have a light show for this song. So if I just double tap here and play the music. And that's just on auto. Incredible. But auto is all well and good, but what if we want to take that one step further? So if I go to the red light, green light track by Duke Jumont, great track for showing off your light shows. Let's press right click, let's auto script it again. However, this time let's press on advanced. Now we can change the automatic function to better suit our needs. So up top here, we have a few options. Intensity isn't how intense the lights flash, they're how bright they are. So base intensity wants to be at zero if you want the lights to fully go black at some point. If you raise this by any amount, your lights will never go black. Pulse intensity on the right hand side again, how bright they can get whilst they're flashing, all these options. But the one you really want to care about is the custom colors. Let's click that option and then right click on the primary color. And obviously this is red light, green light. So let's go red, apply, green, apply. Let's have uh, a complementary color for the tertiary. So maybe an orange. And let's go with a, a kind of bluey purple for the highlight. Now when we click apply to this light show, it will make an automatic light show just like before, but with those colors that we want. So on this view here, let me quickly run through how this view uh, represents what's going on. At the bottom, we have this master track. Now the master track is what the lights will follow unless they have their own um, show going on above. So if they have their own instructions above, then it will take on those instructions. If there's nothing showing, then it will take on what's going on with the master track. Now on top of this, the Philips Hue lights that we mentioned earlier, they can be connected to these light show and that will always read the master track. So if you have got Philips Hue lighting like I have here, you can connect them and they will do whatever the master track is doing. So up here, this red area here, this red track, this is the lights in the middle. And that corresponds to, if we go back to the DMX, you can see the red of the first lights we set up and the white or gray color of the secondary ones. Well, that's the red, that's the middle two lights. And the one below is the outer two lights. And you can see at times they have their own track going on, but there's times where they don't, like here, where they will just take on what's going on with the master track. So let's have a look at what these lines and colors mean. So if I zoom in to a section of the song, I'll be able to show you exactly what's going on. So each track, if I just fold away the top two for the time being so they don't get confused. If we look at the master track, there's three areas we care about. The white lines that are going up and down, this is the brightness of the light. The line, the color block underneath, which sometimes changes color like it does here, or sometimes has a solid color, that's the color of the light. And then underneath that, we have what's known as a strobe track. Now there isn't any strobe applied here at the moment, but I will apply some in a second, show you what it looks like. So for example, if I just highlight this area here, right click, apply strobe, and I can have it strobe from 85% up to 100%. Now those white dotted lines, that is the strobe track. And the little flags below are positions. These lights aren't moving heads, so it doesn't matter. It, they won't listen to position cues. But if we did have moving heads, we can set up positions here on the left-hand side. And each one of these positions, as you can see, is the light moving below. So let's have a quick listen to the music here and see what's going on. Red light. Green light. When the track says red light, and then it says green light, it'd be ideal if the lights went red and then green. They're not doing it. So let's go ahead and change this. So he says red light here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna play a color and I want this to be red. So let's apply that. I also want this to be brighter. So let's have it fade from full brightness to minimum brightness here. And then he says green light here. You can see that on the waveform here. 
So let's get that green light to just apply when he says green light. And again, let's have it really bright. So let's just fade that up to the top there. And let's move that brightness across just like that. Now, let's have a look to how that looks. Red light. Green light. Perfect. So that's how we go in and very basically change what's going on with the lights. Now, how do we get this working with the decks themselves? Well, the first thing we're going to want to do is get a USB stick. So here is a USB stick. And we want to open up Engine on our computer. Now, you will need to change some settings in Engine DJ to make sure that when you export your music onto your USB stick for playing in the decks, that it's going to take the light show with it. So head up to the preferences, go to library, scroll down, make sure that sound switch export is turned on. If you've got various projects within sound switch, you can change here to make sure you've got the correct one. So I'm just going to go to crossfader video because that's the one I was working in. Press OK. And now when we go to sound switch here, we should be able to see that this has a light show. On the right hand side, we've got this little sound switch icon. And we programmed two lights, remember, two songs. We had all of the lights, which has a dot, and we've got red light, green light, which also has a dot. So connect your USB stick and sync that playlist with your USB stick. So now we've got the USB exported. We've got it inserted on our decks. Make sure you've got the DMX adapter, which is connected to your lights, plugged into one of the USB ports on the deck itself. Make sure you select your USB stick, of course. And now let's head into the engine lighting. We can go into professional mode if we wish, or basic. Both will work, not a problem which one we go for. I'm going to go for basic. We can even connect to the Philips Hue smart lights, but I won't do that just yet. Press no to that. Then head in the top left hand corner, we have this USB stick icon. Click that, make sure you, you load into the USB stick. And then we are crossfader video here. That's the profile we exported. And now when we press on our screen, the lights behind me should do what? The screen is doing so I can strobe it do a blue do a white strobe I can just do a blinder so now just like the Philips Hue lights when I load a track in if it hasn't got a sound switch show programmed it will do these banks that we had before you know the hip-hop the dance music we can connect the Philips Hue lights so if we go to the settings click on Philips Hue enable it we can press on the bridge and it will connect now as you can see I've got the lights behind me working and the Philips Hue lighting working here. But let's go take a look at those shows that we created. So let's go to the sound switch playlist. Let's go to the red light, green light track. And just like before, the faders will control the light show. When I say red light, I need you to stop. When I say green light, I need you to stop. Red light. And there we have it, two really easy ways of controlling lighting just using your decks. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you've learned something new, please do subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments below, do you want to see more lighting tutorials and how to get this stuff working to the best of its ability? If you do, let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video, and I'll see you in another video sometime soon. Take care.